Hey everyone, welcome back to the DIY Budget 300B build series. And I really ex getting excited about this project. I've done a lot of work in the last day or two getting some more of this wiring done in the driver tubes. And I want to apologize that I did get a little ahead of myself for, you know, being doing a video series. This afternoon, I got all the wiring done for the driver tubes. And I intended to kind of walk through this as I was building it, but I'm so excited about getting this amplifier finished and hearing what it sounds like that I went ahead and soldered all this up. And so I've got the, um, the input tubes wired up. Still got one resistor left that I need to put in here, but for the most part, done. Got the volume pot and the RCA jacks. Pulled all this out of the other KT88 build I did. So it was real easy just to pop that stuff in. So that's all wired up. I'm probably about 70, 75% done. All I've got left is to run the power supplies over here to these big uh, reservoir caps, wire up the output transformers, wire up the 300B tubes, put the regulators and well maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm halfway done but I'm still a long way in and I've got some of the harder parts done I still have to do a little metal work here figure out where I'm gonna put the um, cathode resistors but I have a pretty good idea how that's gonna lay out and I'm going to today we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I wired up the driver tubes and do a little bit of a dive into the schematic. I know we've kind of gone over the power supply part, but we never really looked at the actual amplifier schematic. And so I want to go into that a little bit too today while we're doing the, the wiring on this part. And I did screw up a little bit here. And things like this happen when you're Building an amp like this from scratch and you're kind of figuring it out as you go along. I know some people like to draw out the layout, and like where every component's going to be, or they sit down with a CAD program and let you know put the dimensions for all the stuff in. And I'm more of a kind of hands on visual person that kind of probably fly a little more by the seat of my pants. And so, um, I drilled these speaker jack holes to be centered over the output transformers and this this speaker jack here is right in right too close to this reservoir capacitor and it would fit but the wiring is going to be real tight and there's really no reason for it so I'm going to move this speaker jack over here and have it you know have one here and here instead of one here and here and being that it's on the back, it's not going to bother me too much. I mean, I'm a little anal retentive about this kind of stuff, but I think I can live with putting a little piece of plastic over that hole and putting some flat black paint on it. And speaking of flat black paint, this is a steel chassis and steel rusts. So anywhere that you drill a hole or otherwise remove the powder coating, except where the star ground thing is, you need to put some flat black paint and testers flat black hobby paint really matches this powder coating well if you don't paint it in the future it's going to end up rusting especially if you live in humid environments or like you're in florida and you're the salt with some salt air so make sure you touch up the insides of every hole you drill even if you can't see it to protect it from rusting in the future so i'm going to zoom in on this driver tube wiring that I did today and we're going to jump in on that so I can get back to working on this thing because I know we all want to hear it see what it sounds like when it's finished okay so we're going to do a quick run through on the schematic I'm not going to get too involved with this as I plan to do a really deep dive on this whole thing once we get it all wired up and the voltages dialed in and all that stuff and I come up with the final, final schematic. But this is the one we're building by. So, today, what we wired up, RCA jacks. Here's the input, 100K 
volume audio taper potentiometer. I'm using an audio note one in this build, but in keeping with the budget one, these little Alps work just fine and they're way cheaper. I just happen to have this audio note one, so that's what we put in this one. Okay, we're going to follow the signal path. Signal comes in. This first resistor here, this one mag, this is an optional resistor that a lot of amplifiers of this type don't use this, and they use the volume potentiometer to have the grid reference ground through that. I don't like doing this because we all know that these volume pots get dusty and if this grid loses its reference to ground, the tube goes crazy, red plates, stuff, bad stuff happens. So, just popping this little one mag resistor from the grid to the ground ensures that we always have a grid leak resistor that's going to reference ground to the grid. So one mag from the grid to ground. The next is the the B plus comes in the here, goes through this 62K 3 watt resistor. We drop from 280 to 70 volts, which is 210 volt drop across this plate load resistor. Then the current goes across this tube and it's grounded through this 470 ohm. I use 3 watt resistors through the whole amp just to be consistent. They're about the same price. They're a little bigger. Also use metal film resistors. Some people swear by carbon comp or you know carbon film. I like metal film resistors. They're quiet. They're consistent. They're really close to the ohms that, that they're rated at and they're, they stay at that ohms. And so highly recommend going with metal film resistors. Got a 100 UF 16 volt cap bypassing this resistor. This amp uses a direct coupled second stage, which is a little unusual. Most amps have a capacitor here but we're going to try this direct coupled second stage. Never built a direct coupled amp before, so this is something new for me too, but this will be fun. And then this second, there's two triodes in the same envelope. That's why it's got these little dot dash lines here. This is the same two. It's one half of a tube and one half of a tube. So there's two triodes in here. So then the B plus comes up here. The plate load resistor for this second stage is a 27K. Goes to the plate. Cathode, it's 27K, 3 watt, with a 47 UF, 160 volt across it. And the key thing here to note is this pin 5 and pin 1 are direct coupled. So, let's jump into the wiring that I did. We're going to start, let me get my schematic here. We're going to start, we'll start over here with pin one. Pin one is the grid of the second stage. And like I said earlier, with being direct coupled, it's connected directly to the plate. So just have a little piece. I use pieces of cutoff resistor lead for these jumpers that I put in amps. So just a little piece of a resistor lead from pin five to pin one. And then we also know that on this, tied to these two pins is also a 62K resistor that's tied to the B plus. So I've set this pin, this first pin down here as where the B plus is going to get fed into the tube on each side. So the other thing that's going to be coming off this B plus is there's a 27K resistor that goes from the B plus to grid two. So here's our 27K, jumps across, 
this is going to be a little jumper over to pin two. Pin three, it's the cathode of the second stage, which is a 27K bypass with a 47UF capacitor. We set this pin down here on the end as our ground. So we we'll have a 27K that it jumps from this pin over to this pin, and this capacitor jumps across those two pins as well. I elevated this capacitor up, which when the amp's turned over, it'll be below this resistor, because I know this resistor is going to put off a little bit of heat, and I don't want these electrolytic capacitors anywhere near these cathode resistors. So... That's why these are standing up in the air like this, is to keep them away from the heat of this resistor. So, the next pin along that we're connecting up is pin 4. It's the grid of the first stage. So, a little jumper over to this pin here. And then the wire, the shielded wire comes over from the potentiometer to the grid. And the ground. Now, I'll go real. I'll talk real quick about how I use connect shielded wire. I like using two conductor shielded cable, and one is the signal, the other is the ground, which gets hooked up on both ends, and then I take the shield and hook it up to the ground on the amplifier end. At the potentiometer end, the shield's not connected. Same thing on the shielded cable coming out to the RCA jacks. The black ground wire and the white hot wire come around over to the RCA jacks. The shield is connected to the ground or the black wire here at the potentiometer, but it's the shield's not connected to anything at the RCA jack end. So that way the shield's only connected to ground at one end of the shield. Also, you want to make sure to use insulated RCA jacks. And you do not want the RCA jacks to be grounded to the chassis at the jacks. You want to have them ground to this lug here, which is then has this blue wire that runs, uh, these two blue wires run over to the star ground that we established when we were doing the power supply. So this pin, although it is bolted to the chassis, it's going to get the majority of its ground through these two blue wires that run over to our star ground. The last pin we got to connect up is pin 6, which is the cathode of the first stage, and it goes from the, pin, the 6 pin on the tube straight over to ground with this 40, 470 ohm resistor and then we have it bypassed with a 100 UF 16 volt electrolytic cap. All the signal path caps are Nikicon. At some point I may come back and try some audio note ones and just see if I hear any different. They've come up with a lower cost option for their electrolytic caps than they've had in the past and I think I'm going to try some of those after I get the amp tune and just see how those sound. We might also try bypassing with film caps. I know that makes a huge difference sometimes in how an amplifier sounds. The other thing that we may do as part of the tuning process is replace this 470 ohm resistor that's bypassed with this cap with a LED combo with possibly a resistor in series. I did intentionally leave this tag strip pin free. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get enough voltage swing out of this direct coupled 6S and 7. And if we can't, I may end up having to cathode couple these two and get some extra drive out of the second stage of this driver tube and I wanted to leave that option open by having a pin here 
that if I rewire this, I'll be able to rewire it as a cathode coupled pair. The other thing I wanted to show you is these really cool four pin sockets that I got. And they turned out a lot cooler than I even thought. As I showed you in an earlier video, I was thinking about using just these standard, these type of standard socket. But these ears block a lot of the cooling potential that this style has. And so I got my favorite adhesive, some Plyobond, and it's basically really strong contact cement. And I glued the sockets to the top of the amplifier plate and let it sit overnight. And I decided to orient it with the heater wires are going to be here on the outside. And then the this is going to be the plate. And that's the grid. Why? Because I got that backwards. That's the plate. That's the grid. And then on this tube, that's the plate. That's the grid. So that the signal path doesn't go anywhere near where the heaters are going to be. And it also keeps the signal path as short as possible. So I can just run a coupling cap from here to here, from here to here. And then the the wires that come out of the output transformer can just go straight to the plates on the tubes. Anyway, once you get, once I let this glue set up, it comes with this little split ring that splits like this. And as you can see, it's kind of wavy shaped too. And you put that in this groove around the bottom of the tube. And I've already installed it on this one and it holds the socket really tight to the chassis. So there's no screws needed, and it lets the ventilation holes go all the way around the tube. So I thought that was really neat. And so far, I was able to mount these tag strips on the screw holes for the tube sockets, and I haven't had to drill any holes in the top of the SAM. And that's one of the things I'm going to try to do with this amp for the first time is not have any extra screws on the top of it. I just think it'll look a lot cleaner and give it a more professional look. So that's where I am right now. This is what it looks like from the top. And see how clean this looks? I mean, that's really going to look nice. And let me grab... Here are these two rings that are going to go over the top of those over those tubes and that's going to really look nice. Going to have the cooling holes between the ring and the tube socket and these little gold trim rings really dress up the top of the amp and hide all the screw holes so that you don't see any hardware. I really do hope you're enjoying this series. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, share with your friends, and I'll see you the next time when we come back for more 300B fun.